Our call to worship words this morning are those of the Reverend Maureen Killeran. Holy is this place. Blessed is this ground on which we gather. Holy are these places. Holy are the places of memory, the place which has formed us, where we store the icons of success and shattered dreams and gather threads and pieces of what we would become. Holy are the places of memory. Holy are the places of the dream, the places over the rainbow, where all the children are wanted and all the people fed, where colors are the source of celebration and youth and age come to table as one. Holy are the places of the dream. Holy are the places of change and pain, where the rivers of our lives run fast. And we hold on, we hold on and grow. Holy are the places of change and pain. Holy are the places of connection, the places where we risk ourselves, where hands touch hands, souls touch minds, and in awareness still, we change our lives. Holy are the places of connection. Holy are the places of becoming, the places of clear vision where life and world are intertwined and we can see forever in this moment and give thanks. Holy are the places of becoming. Blessed is this space that we gather. Holy made whole by all gathered here. May this be so.
Amid all the noise in our lives, we take this moment to sit in silence, to give thanks for another day, to give thanks for all those in our lives who have brought us warmth and love, to give thanks for the gift of life. We know we are on our pilgrimage here, but a brief moment in time. Let us open ourselves here, now, to the process of becoming more whole, of living more fully, of giving and forgiving more freely, of understanding more completely the meaning of our lives here on this earth. Hi, this is the Time for All Ages, and this is the Reverend Donna Dalham. I have always loved animals. And these are just some of the pictures of some babies that I have met over the years. And one of my sisters has a little farm. And on the farm, she had baby goats who are now all grown up with floppy ears and a baby pig, which is now Mr. Nibbles, and he's much larger than this now. And sometimes in my travels, I have found other animals like baby sheep. But this year, this year on my sister's farm, they decided to hatch some eggs. And so my niece, Anna, brought some eggs in the house and under a heat lamp she kept them warm and kept them warm and kept them warm. Sometimes becoming can take some hard work just like this little chick who has started to peck a little hole in this egg and you can see just a little opening there and before long there's even a greater opening happening until finally finally there's a really big opening in this egg and something kind of exciting starts to happen you can see that baby chick making its way out of this egg and you can see the chick really making its way out of the egg. And Anna had quite a few eggs in that kitchen that she was working on hatching. So she had some pictures of a few different chicks making their way out of their eggs. until finally you can see some of them made their way out of the eggs, all the way out, out from the safety of the little hard shell. And they got fluffier and fluffier and fluffier and fluffier. Anna has her favorite chick. And right here you can see she's starting to train the chick to get a little bit more friendly because the chick didn't really know much about people. So it takes a little bit at a time to get used to something new. And here they are with their food dish, which is always very exciting.
And maybe you have some favorite animals or baby animals that you've gotten to know too. For me, it's always fun to watch things grow and it's fun to watch things change. It's also fun to realize that we never stop becoming. The sun debates dawn some mornings, not wanting to rise out of bed from under that down feather horizon. If the sky grows tired of being everywhere at once, adapting to the mood swings of the weather. If clouds drift off, trying to hold themselves together, make deals with gravity to loiter a little longer. I wonder if rain is scared of falling, if she has trouble letting go, if snowflakes get sick of being perfect all the time, each one trying to be one of a kind. I wonder if stars wish upon themselves before they die, if they need to teach their young how to shine. I wonder if shadows long to just for once feel the sun. If they get lost in the shuffle, not knowing where they're from, I wonder if sunrise and sunset respect each other, even though they've never met. If storms have regrets, if volcanoes get stressed, if compost believes in life after death. I wonder if breath ever thinks of suicide, if the wind just wants to sit still sometimes and watch the world pass him by, if smoke was born knowing how to rise, if rainbows get shy backstage, not sure if their colors match right. I wonder if lightning needs an alarm clock to know when to crack, if rivers ever stop and think of turning back, if streams meet the wrong sea and their whole lives run off track. I wonder if the snow wants to be black, if the soil thinks she's too dark, if butterflies wanna cover up their marks, if rocks are self-conscious of their weight, if mountains are insecure of their strength. I wonder if waves get discouraged crawling up the sand, only to be pulled back again to where they began. If land feels stepped upon, if sand feels insignificant, if trees need to question their lovers to know where they stand, if branches waver at the crossroads, unsure of which way to grow. If leaves understand they're replaceable and they still dance when the wind blows. I wonder where the moon goes 
when she is in hiding. I want to find her there and watch the ocean spin from a distance, listen to her, stir in her sleep, effort give way to exist. Our reading this morning are the words of the Reverend Teresa Soto. African-American First Lady Michelle Obama has this question for us in her book, Becoming. Do we settle for a world as it is, or do we work for the world as it should be? For Unitarian Universalists, this question is always on the table. Which way are we headed? One thing COVID-19 and a global pandemic have taught us is that sometimes we can't predict the path. But if along with the question of where we are going, we ask the question, who are we becoming as we go? The answers may prove illuminating. And it is equipped with questions like these and others that we dip into the next dance move have you spent some time grappling with concerns about how you will include not only in-person worship when it's safe, along with online participation, but in-person smaller gatherings when they are manageable to do so? This is what becoming is like, improving our capacity to meet the demands of change. It matters though, whether as a movement we consider that becoming an individual task or the task of communities and covenant. The task of becoming also requires that we connect 
with the values beneath the choices and actions. White theologian Thomas J. Ord frames those connections this way. It should come as little surprise that recent developments in science, philosophy, and culture reveal the interrelatedness of all existence. Relationality is present at quantum level. It profoundly shapes personal and social levels of existence. And relational perspectives influence science research of the distant edges of our cosmos. The world that is and the world that we want it to be remain profoundly connected. The multiple platforms online, in person, small group, on their way to find us, been here for decades, all remaining deeply intertwined. And this, as white poet E.E. E. Cummings would say, is the root of the root and the bud of the bud, or the very source of our divine life and thriving. Things are changing. They will be changing for a while yet. Don't let the feelings of uncertainty convince you that you're missing more than you are. You are a wonderful gift. You can help with the questions of where we're going and who we are becoming. It is a destination on the other side of a pandemic that we have yet to fully explore. Black science fiction writer Octavia Butler taught us that the only lasting truth is change. For Unitarian Universalist ministers, and all Unitarian Universalists, I would add, we are doing this work. This means attending to, in terms of both communities and individuals, who we are becoming. Where are we headed? What about our interconnectedness and how to dance with the flow of change? May it be so. Let us see to it. There is a time that we must rise. There is a time that we must stand there is a time that we must come together for blessed are our lives blessed are love and blessed the promised gathered now there is a time that we must leave from the place where hatreds breed and turning the spirit breathes us together for blessed Yeah. 
human is not very orderly or contained. It's downright messy and sometimes a little or a lot scary. At this time, when as a community, we continue to explore what it means to connect, we're asking how and when we'll connect. When will we be able to meet in person? And how will we continue some kind of online presence and outreach? It's important to remember that being human, especially in times like these, are not very orderly. In Mark Nepo's book, 7,000 Ways to Listen, Staying Close to What is Sacred, he notes in a piece titled The Majesty of Being Human, and I quote, more than consciousness, what makes the human spirit truly heroic is the irrepressible instinct to face all of life's tides with an open heart. The heroic fact that we can be worn by these mighty overwhelming currents and still pucker open and find a way to sing. This is the majesty of being human. Closed quote. This year includes not only the currents of how we adapt to being a community in COVID times, but it includes other currents of change, including the beginning of a new ministry, a new director of religious education, and happily new members and friends who continue to join us. And now as some of them among us begin to feel safe after being vaccinated, there are others who remain without access. We're imagining ways forward safely for our whole church community. During these moments of discernment, we're invited to access our best selves individually and as a community. A foundation of trust is one of the requirements for work like this. It will help us live into the tasks ahead. Trust is a spiritual, individual, and community issue. Trust is the foundation of what nations, faith communities, and families are built on or shattered by. Brene Brown's Super Soul Session on the Anatomy of Trust describes the story of her daughter this way. Ellen, who in the third grade came home from school collapsing in a puddle of tears. Brene asked Ellen, what's wrong? Ellen explained she shared with a couple of friends during recess something really hard that had happened at school. And by the time she got back to the classroom, everyone in the classroom knew what had happened. The students were giggling and pointing and calling her names. The teacher didn't have a clue what had happened, but definitely realized the class was disruptive. The teacher had a marble system. When the students made great choices together, she put marbles in a jar. And then when things didn't go so well, she took marbles out of the jar. And at this moment, the teacher in that classroom was removing marbles from that jar. Ellen looked at her mom after finishing the story and said, I will never trust anyone ever again. Have you ever felt that way? Wanting to talk to Ellen about trust, Brene described that trust is like a marble jar. You share those hard stories and those hard things that are happening to you with friends who over time have earned a full jar of trust. This made sense to Ellen. They continued talking about things that Ellen's friends have done to fill up marble jars of trust, like sharing a seat in the cafeteria with her or remembering her grandparents' names, which was a feat for any friend because Ellen had eight grandparents Trust is earned over time by small events and interchanges over and over again. That was the lesson of their talk. What is it like for you when you trust someone or some group of people 
What did it take for you to fill up your jar of trust? What are the experiences that build and break trust? I'm betting most of us, at least some of us, some of us carry a few of these experiences into relationships, whether we realize it or not. Some experiences I carry into this congregation are from my own personal circle of care. One group I gather with every month to share in loving, non-judgmental space what's happening for each of us on our ministry paths. I also carry times when I catch myself full of hope and anticipation, forgetting that trust requires time, leaving me both impatient and sometimes disappointed. Each of us today has had some experiences related to trust that impacts how we engage and who we engage with. Trust impacts us individually, socially, politically, emotionally, and spiritually. It breaches and leaves an imprint. It sustains us and holds us. It connects us or cuts us in a divided way. We recognize the imprints. We make informed decisions when we do about how to proceed. Braving connection, Brene Brown's breakdown of the anatomy of trust is one way of moving through life and especially periods of change like we're in now. Brown describes braving this way. B is for boundaries. It's important to be clear and consistent. R is for reliability, following through and consistency. To do this, we must be clear about our own limits so we don't offer something and then fall through. A is for accountability. When I make a mistake, apologize and make amends, a key for many 12-step programs. V is for vault. What I share with you, you will hold in confidence and vice versa. The other side of vault is gossip. The receiver of this loses trust in the gossiper. In some realms, this is called triangulation. I for integrity, choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right instead of what's easy, choosing to live our values instead of just professing them. N is for non-judgment, being willing to give and ask for help without judgment. G is for generosity, assuming the most generous of assumptions. Brown is clear that trust is built in small moments and starts first with self-braving and self-love. If we can't trust ourselves, it's difficult to trust someone else. Communities as well as individuals have memories, memories that sustain the blessing of trust, urging community building, visioning and action, and communities are impacted by memories where breaches of trust have occurred, leaving them in states of resistance, either passive or active resistance, states of chaos and swirling, and leaves communities shutting down and closing while they seek protection. Where are the places that we can build on the braving that's already happening here at Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church? Part of our work is clarification of boundaries, looking at what our shared ministry includes regarding roles, what's the role of the board, What's the role of committees? What's the role of the professional minister, your professional religious educator? What's the role of participants? What does a shared ministry look like in a mid-sized church of 200 plus people? Reliability is following through and that's required for the health of any spiritual community. UU minister Eric Wickstrom in his book, Serving with Grace, Leadership as Spiritual Practice talks about the importance of supporting the answer no. He notes one of the great contributing factors to leadership burnout is doing too much. It is spiritual practice 
to say no. I continue to learn and relearn this lesson. It's a trusting of the interdependent web that we're a part of. It's a community and spiritual practice. When someone needs to back away or say no, it leaves room for someone new to participate, to have an opportunity for leadership development. And during this time, as Allen Avenue's nominating committee works to fill leadership positions, it's important to create openings for new leaders. Accountability sounds pretty easy, and it can be easy to admit that we've made a mistake and make amends. It can also be a challenge. And this for me is a thread so closely running through a spiritual grounding in the belief in our own inherent worth and dignity. We have worth that is grounded in something beyond our most recent mistake. We need not be shattered down by admitting our shortcomings as individuals and as a community of faith. Vault, keeping confidence what is shared. As a community, we have an opportunity to build into the fabric of our communication, a vault that includes direct communication. When we have an issue with each other, when you have an issue with me, let's practice this direct communication with the understanding that we each have our own truth that we bring to the table. Perhaps we can lean in with curiosity and compassion. Integrity, continuing to extend ourselves beyond our comfort zones, growing in our ability to seek justice, compassion, and equity in human relations. When we examine what our discomfort is about, when we commit to living into some new lesson, we create openings for new experiences, new understandings, new relationships, vision, and hopes for our community. Margaret Wheatley, if she were with us today, would tell us, and I quote, talk to people you know, talk to people you don't know, Talk to people you never talk to. Be intrigued by differences. Expect to be surprised. Treasure curiosity more than certainty. Closed quote. Thank you, Margaret. We have these opportunities as we engage in the discussion group this afternoon on the UUA Common Read book titled Breathe. We have opportunities when we participate in the Earth Day Workday, which is going to happen next Sunday in the afternoon as we work side by side with people we know, people we don't know, and people we might have never talked to before. Non-judgment paves the way to the path of acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth. The beauty of our UU faith is an enriched by our ability to offer this non-judgmental space to each other. Our UU faith invites us to offer that non-judgmental space to ourselves. This congregation, this community, the United States and the world is enriched by our differences. It is part of our spiritual practice to live into this willingness to make room for a free and responsible search. And last but not least, generosity. Open-hearted, loving, grounding, and accepting that perhaps there were good intentions. And now this doesn't mean that we're not accountable for the impact of our behavior, because that's just not right. But it does mean perhaps we don't write the whole story about an interchange before we have that direct conversation. There is no power greater than a community who's in that open-hearted space of generosity as they renew their interest in what 
their vision and mission is in the world. Ask what's possible. Here is the marble jar. And in our community, there have been deposits over and over again. Sometimes it's people showing up to clean. It might be baking the brownies that went out to the church at home program this last weekend. It's the board of directors, the finance team and the budget team looking at everything to figure out how we can be sustainable and have our vision and mission into the world for the next generation. It's the justice work. It's creating sacred space in spiritual enrichment groups. The jar is full. I invite you now to take a moment and just think about that for yourself. What in this community would be a deposit in that trust jar? What are the small encounters? What are the meaningful, repeated opportunities that have happened? Let Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church be a place where we get to practice what it means to be human. In our days and in our nights, may we find each other waiting with the spirit of love between, among, and within us. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Sweet the angling sun, sweet upon the air, the smell of blue mist rising. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Glorious the trees, glorious the sight of rust leaves falling, falling. Summertime has turned the star wheel, autumn is upon us. Autumn cold has turned the star wheel, winter is upon us. Autumn cold has turned the star wheel, winter is upon us. Grey the windy storms, cold upon our cheeks, the wet rain glistens, glistens. Autumn cold has turned the star wheel, winter is upon us. Leaping is the fire, golden in the glass, the cider glows like amber. Autumn cold has turned the star wheel, winter is upon us. Winter rains have turned the star wheel, springtime is upon us. Winter rains have turned the star wheel, springtime is upon us. Sharp the smell of loam, bursting in our eyes, the turrets of the tulip. Winter rains have turned the star wheel, springtime is upon us. Greening is the grass, soft upon our brows, the sunlight warm caresses. Winter rains have turned the star wheel, springtime is upon us. Vernal clouds have turned the star wheel, summer is upon us. Vernal clouds have turned the star wheel, summer is upon us. 
Gliding are the hawks hovering above the hot and yellow hillside. Vernal clouds have turned the star wheel. Summer is upon us. Crickets in the night, chirping in our ears the sound of moonlit music. Vernal clouds have turned the star wheel. Summer is upon us. Our benediction words are those of the Reverend Teresa Soto. Don't let the feelings of uncertainty convince you that you are missing more than you are. You are a wonderful gift. This work ahead of us is yet unknown. How will we dance to the flow of change? Let us see to it. Thank you.